Hello, this is the next one. Hello and welcome to Unrest Digest. Please like, comment, subscribe. Um, we're trying to hit two subscribers at the end of the night. <laughs> and maybe one, like, <laughs> I think I've got one on one video somewhere. Matt Letizia slam as Ian Wright as completely contradictory for Gary Lineker's support. Contradictory, I'm confused. <laughs> let's find out, let's find out. A number of pundits, are, including Ian Wright, Support of Gary Lineker made his row with BBC Premier League Matt Desis. I mean, do you play for Chelsea? Dis he'd been left particularly disgruntled. Okay. Former Southampton. Oh, okay. Play for Southampton. I thought he'd play for Chelsea. Or did he manage Chelsea? I don't know. Former Southampton striker Matt Letizia has taken aim at Ian Wright for what he says is completely contradictory support of under fire. Fire. Okay. They, sorry, that's just a random letter. That's green. Gary Lineker. I hate reading the same things three, four times. Much of the host, much of the host, much of the host day, the match of the day host is embroiled in fierce row with BBC bosses. Is he though? Who are the BBC bosses? But they're like, yeah, don't worry about it, Gary, we got you covered. For a tweet, he posted criticizing the government. Oh my god. Can't criticize the government. Not in this country. For their asylum policy. Lenka has been pulled from programming as a result, with a number of his colleagues making the decision not to appear in solidarity. I wish I'd watch to show my solidarity. I'm just here to watch the football. I'm not, because I just can't be asked. And football's just, I think it's all fixed now. But anyway, we'll get into that in another one. Blah, blah, blah. However, the former Arsenal striker's show of support has, hasn't impressed Letizia. Speaking to GB News, that's where many people will talk to him. The Southampton icon has bizarrely claimed, definitely not. Uh, wait, is this the Sun? Oh, no, sorry, this is the Mirror. Bizarrely claimed it right didn't show him the same level of support when he was dropped by Sky Sports, despite <laughs> that's not being employed by the broadcaster. I get what he was, I get what he's saying, but I don't know how he could have stood with him. But he could, maybe he could have said something. But what's more important to Ian Wright is the message, which is the Tory is a bird. Except when it comes to um, anything to do with COVID, then government is good. You know, the Tories are evil, except for that like, one thing that is, isn't them. It's just the NHS that isn't run by the Tories. I don't know who's running the NHS. If you know, there's like this whole uh, this whole argument. We need to nationalise the railways. We can't privatise any of the NHS. We need to fund all of it and bring it all under government control. Right. Oh, and get rid of the Tories. Okay. But right now the Tories are in. So, But they'd happily nationalise everything underneath the Tories. Which, I mean, I, that could be worse than nationalising it under Labour. Who knows? But it's just... I mean, I know what, they mean, what they're trying to get at, but... I mean, you've got to do things one thing at a time. None of the stuff that uh, things ever make sense, whatever these people say. It's really small. A bit, a bit he said it's really interesting as Ian is taking a stand for his mate and fellow TV worker. But what's really interesting about it is that if you go back three years and have a look at the reaction of Ian Wright to the second myself, Phil Thompson and Charlie Nichols, I don't know who those people are either, and you see, we'll see that the reaction is completely contradictory to the way he acted to this. So it's all very well to take this stand, but it shows a little, a little bit of consistency, righty. Okay, spelt righty as in W R, uh, like Ian you know, Wright's name. If you're watching, if you're watching, you know what I'm on about. He certainly didn't stand in solidarity with the three of us. No, but maybe he just doesn't care about right? you lot, buddy mates. It was a case of old people have had their time, and it's time to be on to some younger people. It was along those lines. Oh, yeah, he, he copped out, did he? I don't remember seeing that. Oh, despite Letizia's comments on the situation between the BBC and Lineker, right support has not wavered. He also threatened to follow the former Leicester star out of the exit door should he lose his role on Match of the Day. Speaking on the Righty's House podcast, he confirmed, and let me tell you something, if the BBC do not get rid of Gary Lineker, I'm out, I'm gone, I'm not staying out on his own platform, he should be able to blah, 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 say what he wants to say. Gary Lineker, oh, I, I, Unless something dramatic happens, I'm not going to follow up on this. Dog won't leave woman alone when her husband discovers why he 
calls the police. Oh God, there's a picture of a dog like mouthing a woman. I'm not clicking on these clip clips though. Anyway, sorry. He's behind him apparently. There's all these outlets are saying the same thing. I'm sorry, this is even worth another video. As in this video. Right, is the only punditry colleagues that have offered to support the Lunica, really? It's not, sorry. Alan Shearer, Alex Scott, Mika or Michael Richards, and Jermaine Genus are all just a small sample of those who chose not to appear on any BBC programming on Saturday. It's a shame I missed it. It would have been interesting to see. We've just had a bunch of people who've been dying for some some kind of rep not representation, but dying for a role. <laughs> you know, all these other youngsters might have been on there. Oh, hang on. This that led to BBC making major alterations in the broadcasting schedule with football focus and the final score both being pulled late on. I did it even show half of it. Much of the day, meanwhile, just consists of highlights without hosts and pundits. <laughs> it sounds great. Thank you, guys. That's just what we asked for. We didn't want your opinions about politics because, like your opinions about football, they're pretty crap. Like, I could go off on another tirade about these football pundits and they just don't seem to know anything about football. But I played, I played the game, you know, I was in it and I knew that, you know. Come out with the most dumbest stuff, they're worse than the journalists sometimes. I don't want to watch Piers Morgan talking about this. I might end up agreeing with him on some things. It just makes me feel dirty. It launched a petition to have Gary Lineker reinstated at the BBC. Why well, he never left? Oh, sign it here. Oh, come on, let's see how many signatures are on this. Is it more than, what was it? That was a petition, can we stop uh, nukes or something? Yeah. No, that wasn't it. That was a really important, uh, sorry, losing battery. That was a really important, like, thing or something like, we need free speech or, you know, petition to stop the war. And it had, like, nothing in comparison to, we need to sanction Israel. Oh, here we go. 100,000. Oh, sorry. I can't even read numbers. 1,870, 1,134. So nearly 200,000. Oh, they're close. To, they want 200,000 signatures today. Oh, that just looks so sad. Reinstate Gary Lineker. No. No. Keep him, yeah, sack Gary Lineker and I'll pay the TV licence. I don't watch BBC, by the way. I don't watch iPlayer. I um, don't watch ITV. I don't watch live football. I also um, do not want to kill myself. But, um, look at this smug, arrogant-looking prick. Look at him now. Can you see him? Zoom in if you can, because oh, I can't. Oh, then drop the thing. Gary Lineker has been forced to step back from presenting a match. No, he hasn't. He's just probably gone on holiday or something. Oh, he might turn up at my hotel. Ugh. Mira believes Gary Lineker should be able to return to the screens as soon as possible. But Mira... What? I thought Mira... I didn't know Mira was right or left. But... I just never thought, just never thought of him, to be honest. The broadcaster should have stood up to this baying mob. Who is it? Like, who are these people that were saying they, they don't like what, you know, Larry Lineker said? It was just random people on Twitter. Or, like, people on, at the BBC were pretending that they have to remain impartial. But we're not going to reinstate Gary Lineker. He was crap when I played with him on FIFA. And it's everything about him is so smug. And for, a, for like a, someone who's an ex-sports uh, guy or whatever you call it, really crisps. Is that what you want to be selling? I like what um, Ronaldo, when they put the Coca-Cola, when he was at the Euros or something, the World Cup, and um, he was in front of him at the panel, and he was like, don't want that. That's unhealthy. He moves out of the way, and he goes, well, the water, he goes, agua. <laughs> I, I like that. I like That's the kind of thing I like. Not when he's slapping phones out of young young boys' hands. That sounds worse than it actually was. You know what I mean? <sighs> but yeah, I'm not here to talk about Ronaldo. Either. Anyway, I'm gonna end the video there because it's just getting really boring. Hopefully, the next video is actually I'll find something a bit more interesting. I don't know, maybe this one's blown up in Ukraine. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Cheers.